is time. It is time to brew your best beer. The 2016 SJ Pour Challenge is dedicated to your friend and ours, Paul Wickstein. Brought to you by Brewcraft USA. I make Gladfield Malting, Yakima Valley Hops, The Grain Bill, Brewers Exchange, Cake Kingdom Homebrew Supply, Hiraki Homebrew, and a special thanks to our silver sponsors. Okay, so here we go again. Next, next, uh, next entry. Uh, 2016 SJ Port Challenge. Um, U.S. and Canada finals. This is going to be entry number 56Z78T53W. It is it is a uh, Berliner Weiss. This is a kettle soured, traditionally hopped wheat beer, intentionally left in the raw with no fruit added. This style will and can be served with a shot of flavored syrup. However, I prefer the clean wheat and pilsner to balance with a mild sourness. Who am I to argue with the brewer? So I think I'll, I'll uh, do the same thing. So uh, let's go ahead and get into this. It was a late night last night. Stayed up till about uh, 2.15, 2.30, somewhere around there. Uh, I was still a little undecided, although it was you kind of knew where it was going. Um, so fun day to be at work today. Serious, it was a fun day to be at work. All right, uh, let's go ahead and get a get a pour here. Actually, let me get a better glass. That's a nasty glass. Don't know what happened to that glass, but this one's good. All right, here we go. All right, getting that kettle soured look, that kind of lemonade looking hue. I'm not going to get a whole lot of, well, I guess I'll get a little bit ahead here. Oh yeah, a lot of carbon in this one. All right, so from a aesthetic standpoint, this is a nice looking beer. Look at this; it's got a uh, got a nice, nice. What is that? A two and a half, three finger head. Uh, it is. I mean, it's hazy, but it's well, it's light, so you can see through it. It's got a, again, that kind of little bit darker than the last one. I mean, it's light straw, but it's a little darker than the light straw of the last one uh, that I saw, uh, or the last one, uh, uh, Berliner Weiss, that uh, I drank for this this hunt, or for this uh, challenge round. Um, I see, I see, uh, this, is one, this one's gonna be really carbonated, because I, I can actually see the, see the carbonation moving up, and it looks like it's actually a little thicker, because, the bubbles are going up kind of, you know, instead of, instead of streaming up, they're going kind of at a, at, a, at a slower rate. So if I had to guess, this is going to have a little bit of, little bit of mouthfeel to it. I don't see uh, on here what they did in terms of brewing to try to uh, beef up the mouthfeel. But just by looking at it, that's, that's kind of what I'm getting. The, the head is actually st sticking around on this one, which is kind of cool. Uh, and it looks like it has a really fluffy kind of getting some lacing there. Um, it's only a, um, what is it, 3.8% ABV? So, all right, well, let's go ahead and uh, let's get a nose. Yeah, you know, if I had to have a downside of, to these, these uh, kind of kettle soured kind of beers, I mean, I would think with a wheat, I guess I get a little... I mean, I don't know if it's a kettle sour process, but it kind of subdues the kind of subdu su subdues the aroma. Um, I would think with a pilsner, I would get kind of that normal kind of pilsner corn kind of smell. But now, I, I guess I do get a little bit of it now. Now that now that the heads went down a little bit, I kind of get a little bit of that pilsner smell, uh, but I also get that kettle soured um, aroma. That I mean, I'm not a kettle soured person. Uh, I've had the first one this past uh, Southeast Hub. This will be my third or fourth one now. Um, but you know, they all kind of, to me, they remind me of that kind of key lime pie type, type kind of mix between sweet and sour, a little more sour. 
but yeah, so I guess I, I guess now that it's, you know, it's uh, the head has went down a little bit. Uh, it's still sticking around. It's not the other ones I had. I mean, this has got a, like a nice little, it's got a nice little puffy, puffy little cloud on top of the head there. It's not going away. Um, <coughs> but uh, as it's kind of as it's kind of burned off a little bit, I get more of that kind of grain pilsner smell uh, blended in with the sour. So. Yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting a lot more now, a lot more of the citrus kind of kind of flavor. So, uh, all right, well, there you go for the nose. Let's go ahead and go for a taste. To the brewer, cheers. Wow. Okay. Where do I start with this? Man. Okay. A lot of good things going on with this. All right. Um, from a technical standpoint, this thing, I mean, to me, appears to be brewed flawlessly. First. Um, second, the mouthfeel is... Now I know why the bubbles are going up a little slower. It has a much, uh, I don't want to say much thicker, make it sound like it's a thick syrupy thing. But compared to most of the other sessions I've had so far in Southeast and now in US and Canada, this one is the closest to, you know, the mouthfeel you normally get on a regular beer. It's not as watery, it's not as thin, it's, it's uh, it's the high range of light into the well into the medium. I think it's about an average uh, uh, mouthfeel. The carbonation is like perfect on this thing. It's not biting. It's not, you know, just missing the mark. It's like bam, right where it needs to be for this for this kind of flavor in the in the mouthfeel profile. The um, sourness and some of the other ones I've had the sourness kind of you know when you drink uh, like a lemonade but it's got a little maybe a little too much powder or you know it, but it has that kind of weird not not I don't want to say rubber flavor but um, it's kind of sometimes that strange sourness some of the other ones had that this one here has like perfect like just enough sour to let you know it's there And it kind of sticks there on the on the at the end of the tongue too, and kind of hangs there for a minute before it kind of dissipates. Really beautiful. It's a thing of beauty. Um, I mean, look at the look at the lacing. This thing's looking like a looks like an IPA, doesn't it? I mean, that's beautiful. Um, and it's kind of a creamy carbonation. It's just below the biting, but with a little bit of creaminess, it coats the tongue, makes the flavor spread out across your tongue. Really, really neat. Now, what made me say wow was on the back end. You know, sometimes when you, you drink a beer and as you're tasting it, you kind of breathe in through your nose and the kind of the aroma blends with the, with the, with the flavor and it kind of really accentuates a certain aspect of the aroma and makes it taste even stronger. Well, this does it for, and, and I have a beer that I brew, uh, I call it Dreher's Abomination. It's a it's a Vienna pale, you know, instead of a Vienna lager or a place of lager yeast with a pale, it ends up becoming an American amber. It tastes a lot like a uh, fat tire. But what I like about that beer is I get that same effect as I'm tasting it and I breathe in through my nose. It accentuates kind of a graham cracker, grainy kind of, kind of taste. This one does that. Um, so, so you've got the good mouthfeel, you've got the pretty beer, you got the round, uh, the round uh, uh, kind of flawless flavor on the souring, and then on the back end, as you're as you're finishing, you know, through the uh, through the through the palate, and you kind of slightly breathe in, you get the. I don't know if I'm being too beer geek for you here, but uh, but you get the kind of crackery, grainy uh, 
aspect about it, which I freaking love. Um, I just love it. I usually get it a lot when I do Vienna Gold Pills. That's uh, or, uh, or Gold Pills Vienna. It's a Breeze uh, Gold Pills Vienna. But I usually get that same kind of quality. So <clears throat> don't know how you did it to the brewer, but this is a this is a kick-ass beer. Man, you could you could kill some of these watching a football game. Um, it's certainly got that sessionable quality, but it doesn't feel like you're drinking a session. But you can drink a lot of them, and it has really, really. I think for a for this kettle, kettle soured, most of the kettle soureds I have, the, the only critique I would give them with uh, 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 the only critique I would give them is that yeah, it's got this cool souring flavor, but there's not really much complexity to the beer. I think whatever the brewer did on the backside that gives you that kind of grainy aroma flavor. Uh, Graham crackery kind of, kind of, kind of, uh, you know, subtle on the back end. Push this one over the top for me. This is a freaking excellent beer. Good job to the brewer. Um, wow. I don't think I can say enough good things about it. Uh, that's all I have for this round. I'll go ahead and score this thing and got about three more beers and they're left to go, I think. This, will, this is my sixth beer. I got, I've got three more to go. So, uh, man, loving this. This is good. I think, and I got, I think I got one more sour and I got like some, some dark beer. So, Looking forward to it. Cheers, everybody.